بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا وقدوتنا محمد عليه أفضل الصلاة وأزكى التسليم اللهم علمنا بما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزيدنا علما يا رب العالمين عليكم السلام ورحمة الله Okay, last class was an extremely important class and because it's it was an extremely important class we're going to spend some time reviewing the concepts first and then we're going to use the exercise that it's kind of like a dialogue we had only really gotten through it once last class we're going to give other um, students an opportunity to practice and read the dialogue and then the exercise the exercises that follow inshallah so <clears throat> If we go to what did we cover okay so we had three main topics um, we had prepositions okay so we're we've been talking about prep prepositions for the last several classes what do prepositions do prepositions allow you to talk about the relationship between um, nouns okay so those relationships might be about possession. Those relationships might be about um, location. Those prepositions or that relationship might be about um, time, right? When we use words in English such as from and to, over, above, under, on, all these sorts of things. These are the, we're in the realm of prepositions. We're talking about the relationship between two different things. The book is on the table, okay? We had first learned to use prepositions as part of the khabar, as part of the predicate in a jumla ismiya, which was a sentence that began with an ism, okay? Technically called a nominal sentence. So we began with al-kitabu ala al-maktabi. The book is on the desk. And so on and so forth, okay? What we're going to now get into is using prepositions in the second type of sentence. We said way in the beginning of this course that there are two main types of sentences. We've only been having lessons for maybe, you know, 13, 14 sessions. And we're already going to learn the second and last type of sentence in Arabic. Okay, everything else is extra. Little things, bells and whistles that you can add to sentences to make them more sophisticated. But when it comes to the basic sentence types in Arabic. We've spent all our time up until last class talking about Jumla Ismiya, and now we're going to begin our journey of talking about Jumla Fi'liya, the second type of sentence. And then you're going to have the main foundation to understand sentences in Arabic. The rest is really just vocab and practice. So what is a Jumla Ismiya versus a Jumla Fi'liya? A jumla ismiya is a sentence, jumla means sentence that begins with an ism, okay? Whereas a jumla fi'liya is a sentence that begins with a fi'l, which is a verb. Now, why is it important to distinguish between, between these two types of sentences? Because each of these two types of sentences has different parts. Right. If I'm going to have, um, if I'm going to bake a cake on Monday, and I'm going to make, I don't know, bread on Tuesday, there are different ingredients that go into those two final products. Right. You can't take the products from bread only by themselves and make a cake. You're going to be missing some. Something. Some things might be the same but other things are going to be different and vice versa. In English, we don't really deal with this because every 
sentence in English has to have a verb. But in Arabic, we do deal with this because there are two major types of sentences. So we learned what were the, the key ingredients of the first type of sentence, the jumla ismiya. We said there were two who can tell us either by microphone or by chat. What were the two main ingredients of the jumla ismiya? Muqtada and khabar. Very good. We have perfect. We have one person from the chat and one person from the microphone. That's exactly what we're looking for. Mubtada and khabar. If you can't get a hang yet of the Arabic terms for grammar, then you could get by for now with knowing that this roughly corresponds to the subject and the predicate. Okay. So if you identify this sentence as jumla ismiya, okay, you know that it has to have these two parts. Now we're going to a different type of sentence entirely. It's going to have completely different parts. Okay, let's look at what those parts are. No, not that slide. Where was it? Very good. Okay, so there are three possible parts to a verbal sentence. Okay in this order. The first is the verb. The second is the subject of that verb or the doer of that verb. And sometimes we're going to have an object. Okay. Those are your three ingredients of a verbal sentence. So if you can understand that, if you can compartmentalize in your mind, two rooms, one is jumla ismiya, one is jumla fi'liya. Jumla ismiya has these two ingredients. Jumla fi'liya has these three ingredients. Then you are going to have a very easy time, inshallah, understanding Arabic grammar. All that's left is understanding vocab. Good. So if we see it in action here, we have khalaqa. Allahu al arwa Khalaqa is a past tense verb that means he created. Who created? Allahu. Allah created. What did he create? Al arwa So we notice that the order is switched from English where we say Allah created the earth. A literal translation of the Arabic is he created Allah, the earth. How do we know who is doing the verb versus who is receiving or what is receiving the verb? That comes down to the fatha or the dhamma. We see that Allah has a dhamma at the end of it, Allahu, which means that he is the one performing the verb. And al-ard has a fatha at the end, al ard which means it is the object of the verb. Very good. Excellent. Okay. So let's get back to the book, inshallah, and we're going to, I'll get into, again, the structure of why did we start with past tense verbs? What is, what are the essential parts of a past tense verb? We'll get into that, but let's get back to the book to get into it, inshallah. Now I will need two volunteers. I'm going to go down my list here. I have... Um, I'm going to assume I have two people with me from the Sheikh family, and I will ask two people from the Sheikh family to participate with this dialogue. One of you will be Al Mudarris, the teacher, and the other one will be Muhammad. Uh, min Aina and Very good. Yabani. Excellent. Keep going. ومن أين عامر؟ هو هو من الصين. Very good. Make sure that we make the sun letter 
we cut out the lamb. Hua mina sin. Hua mina sin. Excellent. Woman aina hamidun. Hua mina hin. Yeah. Very good. Aina abbasun. Kharaja. Aina dahaba. Dahaba ila al mud. Mud. What's it? Mudir. Mudiri. Mudiri. Where is that? Al Mudiri is the principal, or it could be the head administrator. Oh, he's in trouble. Okay. Yeah. Wait. <laughs> Excellent work. Very good job. I'm going to have you two go back through this conversation, keep the same roles, and translate as best you can what was being said. You guys read it very, very well. But if somebody missed last class, for example, I want to see, you know, so that people understand the content of what's going on. So go ahead and do it again and translate the sentences in English. Uh, where are you from? I am from Japan. And where is Amir from? He is from China. Uh, and where is, where is Ahmed? No, where is Ahmed from? Hamid or Ahmed? Hamid. Very good. Hamid. Okay. He is from India. Uh, where is Abbas? Uh, principal. Where, where is, is Haraja? He has no, Haraja. Does that mean? Haraja. He went. He went. Yes, good. He went? Yes. He went. Where did he go? Well, he went to the principal. Uh, where Where did Ali go? He went, um, he went to, what's Mirhata? Mirhata what? is the toilet. He went to the toilet, not in the toilet. Very good. Excellent <laughs> job. Excellent job, both of you. Okay. So what are some of the new things we've learned? So some of them are um, country names. Okay. We have Al Hind, which should be very intuitively India for us. We have a scene, which should be a little bit less intuitively China. We have Al Yaban, which should very obviously be uh, Japan. We also have, we're using our prepositions. Okay, so min means from and ila means to. We're also using our question words from before. Aina means where. So notice how we've learned very easily now to ask and inquire about where someone is from. Min Aina. And from there, we have a variety of options who we're going to ask about. If we're going to say, use a proper name after that, min aina ammar, then that means that we're asking, where is ammar from? Wa min aina hamid, and where is hamid? Or we could use prepositions. We have learned now for excuse me, I said prepositions, I meant to say pronouns, pronouns. We have learned four pronouns. Previously, we learned hua, he, and hia, meaning she. And now in this lesson, we learn enta, which means you, and ena, which means I. So here we have min ena, enta, where are you from? Ena, min el yabani, I am from Japan. Notice how the question, next thing to notice is how the question changes if we remove the preposition. The mudarris here, he asks at one point, Aina Abbas, which is a different question than Min Aina Abbas. If he had said Min Aina Abbas, it would have meant, where is he from? But without the preposition, Aina Abbas means, where is he? The last thing, and probably the most important thing in this lesson is that we are now introduced to verbs. The response to that question is kharaja. Kharaja means he left, he exited. Aina dhahaba. Dhahaba means he went. So the question we would translate in English, Aina dhahaba, where did he go? Now let's take one second and talk about past tense verbs. Why are we learning past tense verbs 
first. What is the structure of a past tense verb? So if we have, let me see, let me annotate this. Let's look at our kharaja. Okay, I'm gonna write on this right here. We have kha, ra, and jim. Pardon my sloppiness, I don't have my normal mouse. Okay, we noticed that the kha has a fatha, the ra has a fatha, and the jim has a fatha. Okay. <clears throat> Past tense verbs are not like ism. They are not like nouns. When we were learning nouns, we learned that the final small vowel or short vowel, the haraka, changes depending upon the grammar. Mm -hmm. Right? So we learned that it could be al baytu, it could be min al bayti. And now we learn that if it's the object, it can become el beta. However, with verbs, this is always going to be the same. This is fixed. The fetha is fixed at the beginning and at the end. If we change that, then it means something entirely different. It's called the conjugation where we're not just talking about now he left we'll be talking about okay she left they left i left you left right we're changing the meaning entirely but for he left ha ra ja these two the first and the last haraka are fixed they are never going to change whether the Fi'l is the first word in the sentence, whether it's the last word in the sentence, whether it's in the middle of the sentence, it's always going to be the same. This category of words where the ending does not change depending upon its grammar is called mebni. Mebni, for those grammar nerds like myself out there, it means it's indeclinable. It means that this last thing is never going to be a bomma. It's never going to be a kasra. It's not going to be a sukun. It is going to stay a fetha. <clears throat> so how do we learn? How do we learn past tense verbs? We have to learn the three letters. And all we need to know, the only variable that might change is the haraka on top of this middle letter. Sometimes it's going to be a fetha. Less commonly, it's going to be a kesra. And even less commonly, commonly, it's going to be a bumma. Okay, so that is very important to know. Um, da, 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 da. Okay, let's see. There's one other thing. Good. The other thing that we need to realize is asking a question: Why are we starting with? past tense verbs because in Arabic the past tense verb is the default unit of a verb. It's the root word from which all other verbs and all other words are going to be derived. Okay so let's give a opposite example in English what we do in English is we take a present tense verb and we add things to it to make other forms, such as we have the verb I walk, which is present. If we want to make it past tense, <clears throat> then we have to add a suffix to it, I walked, to make it past. It's the opposite in Arabic. In Arabic, the past tense is the default and the present tense is actually an add-on to the past. So that's why we're learning past tense verbs first. And this is conjugated for third person singular, he. So kharaja means he left. Zahaba means he went. So we'll learn more about conjugation in later lessons, but that's where we're starting just to make it easy. But once you realize these patterns, then all you have to do is learn this root word, the past tense verb, 
and you are rolling. You can now, once you learn the conjugation patterns, once you learn other things, you can derive many, many words from that pattern. <clears throat> Good. Okay. Let me see who are my next. Let's take uh, Brother Awesome and Brother Sa'ir. If you two, let's see, Awesome, you be the Mudarris and Sa'ir, you be Muhammad, and let's run through this once more. <clears throat> Um, min aina anta? Uh, ana, ana min al, ana min al yabani. Wa min aina ammarun? Hu, hu, mina, hu, hu mina sini. Wa min aina hamidun? Can you scroll up, please? Thank you. Oh, sorry. Okay. Who uh, am I in Hindi? Aina Abbasun. Kharaja. Aina Zahaba. Zahaba ila al mudar ila al ila al ila al mudiri. Wa aina Zahaba Aliyun. ذهب إلى المير إلى المير إلى المير إلى المير إلى المير حادي. Excellent work, guys. Fantastic. Good. Okay. Next two, I have. Um, let's see. Seth, can I ask a quick question? Yeah, please. Anybody have any questions? Please let them rip. Would it be incorrect to say um, إلى Aina Zahaba, like almost like to where did he go? No, it would not be correct. But when it comes to um, being eloquent in Arabic, like within, I suspect most languages, I know English, if it's possible to remove a word and have the meaning preserved, it's considered more eloquent than to have many unnecessary words, if that makes sense. Okay, Zakalaka. Okay, so let's go to um, we have Tamim and Muhammad Tariq. You two. Uh, Tamim, be the Mudarris and Muhammad Tariq, could you be Muhammad? You'll be Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam. Min Aina Anta. Ana min al Yabani. Wamin Aina Ammarun. Wamin a Sini. Wamin Aina Hamidun. Wamin a Hindi. Aina Abbasun. Faraja. Aina the Haba. The Haba il Mudiri. Wa Aina the Haba Ali Yun. The Haba il Miri Haz. Hazi. Ashawa. Very good. Excellent work, you guys. Okay. Um, next two. Masarrat and Samira. Could you please, uh, Masarrat, could you be the Mudarrista? <laughs> and uh, Samira, could you be play Muhammad? Min Aina Anta? Anam Nal Yabani. Wa Min Aina Ammarun? Huwa Min Assini. Wa Min Aina Hamidun? Huwa Min Al Hindi. Aina Abbasun Haraja Aina the Haba Zahaba in Al Mudiri Wa Aina the Haba Aliyun Zahaba in Al Marhadi. Fantastic. And uh, last but not least, the Sayyids, Saira and Muslim. You're up. Let's have um, Saira be the Mudaris and Muslim be Muhammad. Min Aina Anta Ana Min Al Yabani Wa Min Aina Amarun Hua Min Al Sini Wa, wa Min Aina Hamidun Hua Min Al Hindi Aina Abbasun Kharaja Aina Zahaba Zahaba Ila Al Mudiri Wa Aina Zahaba Aliyun Dahaba ilal mirhadi. Excellent work. Fantastic. Great job, everybody. 
Okay. Now, I hope you were paying attention to all of that conversation because now we've got some reading comprehension questions. So the enta, okay, in the exercise was Muhammad. So let's see if we can answer the question according to the content of uh, the conversation. So who will we, who's our first victim? Let's go to Tamim. Okay, first question. Mean aina anta? Assuming that you're Muhammad, like from the dialogue. Ana min al yabani. Very good, excellent. That's exactly what we're looking for. We're putting our minds as if we're still in the dialogue, but now we're trying to recall the information, building our reading comprehension skills in a different language. Okay. Anta min al Filipin. This is a question to uh, Masarrat. Now, a Philippine means the Philippines. Okay, it's a cognate. Right. right. Um, so I guess la la. Um, this is asking Muhammad, right? Yes, correct. Uh, so so do I just say la ana? Min al yaban or yeah, exactly. We have not learned yet how to negate, right? We've learned questions, we've learned affirmative statements, but we haven't learned how to say yet, I'm not from this place. So we would have to answer with something slightly different. Uh, no, la ana min al yaban. No, I am from Japan. Now it's going to get a little bit harder. So, uh, Muhsin, men min al sin. Sorry, uh, Amaru Minasini. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Who? Amar? Amar Amaru Minasin. Yes. Oh, sorry. Amaru um, Minasin, yes. Excellent. Yes. Amarun Minasin. Excellent work. Wamin Aina Hamidun. That question is for Cyrus. Huwa min. Hindi. MashaAllah. Excellent. You did something I'm really, really happy you did. She said hua. Okay. She used the pronoun because from the question, we already know who we're talking about. She could have said hamidun min al hindi, but she chose to use the pronoun instead, which is completely correct and probably a little bit more um, uh, eloquent to say hua min al hindi. Uh, and the only thing is that Hind in Arabic is literally the Hind, so it, it's El Hindi. But fantastic job using and applying the pronoun. Uh, Samira, Aina Zahaba Abbasun. Haraja? Or Abbas and Kharaja. Yes, very good. Excellent. Um, Kharaja is correct. Okay. We could also say Kharaja Abbasun. Kharaja Abbasun. Can we say Abbasun Kharaja? It's possible for reasons that we will get into later because it's a little bit advanced, but it's not, okay, it's not necessarily rearranging the order of the jumna fi'li. Okay, if we say kharaja abbasun, that is the default order of the jumna fi'li. We have the the verb and we have the we have the subject or the doer of that verb after the verb. If somebody and that's the more correct response. But if somebody asks men Zahaba or men kharaja, then it's possible that you could say Abbasun kharaja, in which case the actual sentence would be kharaja Abbasun, but you're adding emphasis to the fact that Abbas is the one who left. Um, 
We'll get into the rules for when you can do that and when you can't do that later. Next, going down to uh, Brother Muhammad. Adhaba Aliyun ila al mudiri. Ila al mudiri. Naam? Well, let's see. The, who was it? And this is my own um, <laughs> poor comprehension. I'm exposing myself here. Who was it that went to the Mudiri? No, it was not. It was Ali who went to the Ali went to the Mirhab. And it was Abbas who left and went to the Mudir. Oh yes. So if the question is you have a couple options of how you could answer. La. Good. You could say la, and then what else might you add? Abbas al Mudiri. Yes, Zahaba Abbasun il al Mudiri. So you could correct that aspect of it, or you could correct. You could stick with Ali, and mention where Ali went. You could say la. ذهب علي إلى المرحاض. Right? You have two options there, and it's not clear from the question if they're more concerned about where Ali went, or if they're more concerned about who it is who went to the Mudir. So, is there a way to find out which they are actually talking about? There is, if they have used a different question. So, for example, if they had said, Aliyun ذهب إلى المديري, then that would be, it would be putting the question right before the person. So that would indicate that they're more concerned about where that, where, which person went to the mudir. In which we would say, لا, عباس ذهب إلى المديري. Or, ذهب عباس إلى المديري. If, they were, um, but as it's as it's constructed right now, we can't tell are they concerned more about Ali or about who went to the Mudir. Excellent job, everybody. Everybody is doing fantastic. We have a little bit of review here. Just to clarify, yes. so I can Aliun Dahaba and Dahaba Aliun. I can say both ways, but if I want to emphasize it, I'm going to say Dahaba Aliun. The default is Zahaba Alim, right? The default set sentence structure is Zahaba Alim. If you're beginning a sentence with no context, you're not responding to anybody, then it would not be to correct to say Aliun Zahaba, okay? I mean, people would understand what you're saying, but they would tell that this is kind of like a translated English sentence that's being kind of forced through an Arabic, through Arabic words. However, if you're responding to a question, right? And the question itself is having emphasis. The question is maybe it's focusing on who was it that went? Then it could be correct. It, it, I should say it would be correct. And it could be even maybe more clear to say Ali on the heaven, il al -Nihadi. It's like you're emphasizing it was him that went. Yes, very good. So you have a little bit of review here. We'll skip over that because it's fairly basic. Everybody did fantastic. al ghurfatu min al ghurfati min al hammami al mirhabu and so on and so forth. Okay, and let's read. Let's see how much time we have. We have about four minutes. Okay, okay. Okay, well, there was a question I'll take time to respond to now, and we'll see if uh, we have time to do the, the following one. So we had a question uh, a bit ago someone sent in. They said that the subject and verb are essential in a jumla fi'liya, okay? 
What about ayah number two of Surah Rahman? So we have Ar Rahman, Alam al Quran, Khalaq al Insan. Okay, very good. So this is a situation in which the subject is implied. Ar Rahman, Alam al Quran, Khalaq al Insan, Alamahu al Bayan. What do we have? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started with Ar-Rahman for emphasis, right? If we were to go back for, to the original sentence structure, it would have been Allama Ar-Rahmanu Al-Qur'an, right? Khalaqa Ar-Rahmanu Al-Insan. That's the default sentence structure. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is trying to emphasize the fact that he is Ar-Rahman. And so he begins with the sense with Ar-Rahman, Allam al-Qur'an, Qalaq al-Insan. And it's also more uh, eloquent because it's grasping the attention of the listener right away, as opposed to with a, a longer sentence just to start with a provocative word, a provocative title, Ar-Rahman is much more efficient at capturing the attention of the listener. Okay, that pretty much takes us to the end of class. If you want to um, review and work on these questions, and I highly recommend if you have the time to write them as well, because the writing will help cement it in your mind. And when you're reading and writing, put the, the harakat, put the small, the small vowels. Min aina fatima tu. Hiya min al hindi. Kharaja al mudarrisu min al fasli. Wadahaba ila al mudir. And so on and so forth. So we have seven exercises there. And then if you We'll go over all of this. The last exercise for this particular um, chapter is selecting the correct preposition based off of the context of the sentence. So, al kitabu blank al maktabi. It wouldn't make sense to say min, the book is from the desk. It wouldn't make sense to say ila, to, or yeah, you could say fi, but the most correct and the most common would be to say ala al kitabu, ala al maktabi, and so on and so forth. Those are two good exercises. You have a little bit of uh, a place where they gathered all of the vocab for uh, the lesson, and we will review that together next time. But if you can do it ahead of time before uh, next class, it will be very beneficial, inshallah. Anybody, any final questions before we depart? I mean, well, yeah. Thank you very much, everybody, for your attention as usual and your participation. Everyone's doing fantastic. Keep up the good work, and I'll see you next time, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa